know I love to be wined and dined in a Chicago cafe. The chefs are the best and the menus are so gourmet. The best cuisine on the scene is in Chicago land, USA. Great chefs, great chefs of Chicago. Welcome to Great Chefs of Chicago, a television masterclass with chefs of some of the finest restaurants in the Chicago metropolitan area. This time, Jackie's and Chef Jackie Etcheber. A native of Hong Kong, Chef Jackie came to this country at age 17 with her family's blessing and $1,000. She attended college in Iowa, then transferred to the University of Houston in hotel management. After graduation, she moved to Chicago and began work at the Ritz-Carlton. There, she met her husband and partner, Pierre. After a stint at the Park Hyatt, she bought a 17-seat cafe. The snack shop turned a tidy profit, but anxious to learn more about running a stylish restaurant, she moved on. Positions at a restaurant owned by Jean Bauchet and at the Mayfair Region Hotel provided the necessary instruction. In 1982, after only 11 years in the United States and with limited formal training, Chef Etcheber opened Jackie's. Located on fashionable Lincoln Avenue, the restaurant is currently a hot spot. Chef Jackie's enviable success may be attributed to her boundless energy and fortunate timing. Her predilection for seafood and lighter fare attracts the city's young upscale diners in droves. The chef readies ramekins for baking thin sheets of phyllo pastry. Brush it with a clear fry butter. What I usually do is cut half the sheet, fold it in half. Just like that. And then just put it in the oven at 300, 325, and cook it about 10 minutes. And then when it come out, you just pick it up. This is, when you take it out, this is what it looks like. Chef Jackie begins a simple beurre blanc that will be the base for sauces in the first three dishes. Chopped shallot and white wine are reduced until almost dry. This is your reduction. Re this is how much you reduce. Okay. And we're going to start from this one to make the butter sauce. All right. Whipping cream is added. Try to warm up the pan after it's reduced. Warm, not hot. You can't boil them. A whopping two pounds of unsalted butter are gradually incorporated. Season it. The base is strained before starting the derivative sauces. Mm -hmm. 
In this case, tomato paste and chopped basil flavor the beurre blanc. Julienne oyster mushrooms, bamboo shoots, chopped green onion, and julienne ginger will be sautéed with minced garlic until tender. Meanwhile, rinsed snails are sautéed separately with garlic and olive oil. The sautéed vegetables fill the phyllo nest and are garnished with chopped tomato. Snails and tomato basil sauce ring the nest and the artful appetizer is completed. Seafood salad begins with two pounds of large mussels which are rinsed. White wine. The mussels are cooked with chopped shallots and white wine for five minutes, covered. Chef Jackie trims the chewy part from fresh sea scallops. When the mussels open up and pull away from their shells, they are removed from heat. Okay. Save your shells and then later on, clean this part out and rinse the shell up with some water and that to keep for the garnish on the uh, seafood salad later. Seems like these are very clean mussel. You don't really hardly need to debeard it. This scallop that I get is a sea scallop. Salt pepper, a little bit green scallion, Salad components are sautéed in olive oil. Linguine. Linguine, pre-cooked in salted boiling water. Assembly begins. The leafy nest is radicchio, a currently chic salad ingredient. Salmon caviar and goat cheese. The mussels have also been sautéed and are placed back in their shells. For the um, seafood salad, the mustard. For this dish, seed mustard flavors the original butter sauce. The chef begins a striking fish entree. 
Striped sea bass fillets will be briefly sauteed and baked. Halibut or red bass may be substituted. I usually leave the skin on because of the color. Salt and pepper. Skin up. In the oven. Peeled sliced avocado will garnish. A sprinkling of lemon juice will keep it from turning brown before service. The fish is baked in 500 degrees in my oven. And if the household going to use in the gas or electric stove, I would recommend um, 400, 450. But it's going to take a little bit more time in the, in the household one. To see the fish is cooked, the skin, the inside part should be transparent. And this part is done, but this part is almost ready. Chef Jackie quickly dispatches the remaining garnish. Peeled Devane shrimp are sauteed in olive oil with julienne of green, yellow, and red bell pepper, Niswa olives, tiny yellow plum tomatoes, and patty pan miniature squash. Any combination of colorful, fresh vegetables may be used. Lemon juice has been added to the basic beurre blanc and accompanies the sea bass. Green peppercorn that you can obtain from the local gourmet food store. Depends on your taste. I like them spicy and hot. So I'm just going to put a little bit more green peppercorn. I would say about three tablespoons of it. One teaspoon of the chopped shallot, white wine, approximately half a cup, and a dab of brandy. If you haven't already guessed, this is green peppercorn sauce she's preparing. You put this on the stove, reduced it, and the final result should look like this, all the way down with no liquid. Okay, and then after this, you add in your demi glass. For this recipe, I would say approximately four cups. The key to all restaurant sauces. Jackie's demi glass calls for 20 pounds of veal bones and is simple if you happen to have a 10 gallon stock pot in a free weekend. And bring this up to a boil, salt and pepper it, and that should be the way to do the green peppercorn sauce. Okay? And while this thing is getting, bringing up to a boil, I will start on the quail and the duck. Salt and pepper a little bit. This is a mala duck breast. The mala duck is a cross between a domestic duck and a wild duck. And this one is 
the cross between a viscophy, a muscophy, and a maladuck. When the skillet over there is very, very hot, we will lay the fat side down because the fat will cook enough of it, okay? The way we do this one, with the fat side down, it'll take out some of the grease from the skin of it, and we use that fat from the skin to baste and cook the duck breasts. This one goes in the oven 500 degrees. And in the meantime, we can cook the quail. The quail is browned in olive oil and will briefly roast in a 500 degree oven. When it's a little bit brown on this side, put it in the oven. The duck breast, we like to cook at medium rare. And depends on the preference of the persons. And they can cook it medium, medium well, or whatever way that they wanted it. We take the duck breast out the oven to pour up some of the grease. and continue cooking about two or three minutes. This thing is coming up to a boil. And here, I have assembled together the leaves of the radicchio and some of the marsh here. Okay, pull the stem out a little bit here. Quail should be more ready before the duck breast. We lay this in the center of the marsh. And I turn the duck breast. It takes the salt and pepper on this demi-glass reduction with the green peppercorn, and that should be ready to serve. The duck breast is removed from the oven and will be sliced. Let it rest for about a minute before we cut them. Green peppercorn sauce completes the presentation. When I watched Julia Child on TV, and this man from Cincinnati who's a chef owns this restaurant, and he was demonstrating how to make the chocolate bag that he stuffed with 
truffles. And so I figured out that I'm going to use the bag as a base, but I do a variety of things. And it came up to the idea of using the bag and hold the white chocolate mousse inside and the berries. And so what I would do is try to figure out what bag that he uses on the TV. And it took me a whole six to 12 different bags before I finally come up to this idea. I eat enough caramel popcorn, OK? And then I look at these bags at the caramel popcorn shop and gave me the idea that I can probably use it and still be able when I tear it and it won't crumble like I did with a coffee bean bag a, um, or a uh, wax uh, croissant bag that I buy from uh, a croissant shop or something like that. So we, f we brought back this bag from the caramel popcorn shop and trim it in half. Flatten it and straighten it out. And you have to do is you must line these on the on the outside. And the one reason we figure out to do something like this is enable us to tear the bag without the edges. crumbled. This is a semi-sweet. Chef Jackie's paint is melted semi-sweet chocolate. Put it in the, my walk-in freezer since it is minus 10 degree outside. So I'm going to put it outside. It will freeze faster. But for you at home, I would suggest to put in your own freezer. This version of white chocolate mousse starts with milk brought to the boil. It is combined with melted white chocolate. All these should be all dissolved. Squeeze the water out. At this point, gelatin is added to the white chocolate and milk. Either hydrated gelatin leaves as used by the chef or more readily available powdered gelatin dissolved in some cold milk may be used. The mixture is cooled over ice water until partially set. Whipping cream has been beaten and will thicken the mousse okay. along with beaten egg whites. Then we do the egg whites. The egg white has the egg white has to be stiff. And in the midway, you squeeze some lemon juice in it for the flavor. Okay. The whipped cream and egg whites are folded together before the chocolate mixture is gently incorporated. That's it for the white chocolate mousse. And you must set this overnight because the gelatin inside will hold up and um, it won't be like jello. It won't be as hard as jello. It will be semi, uh, semi stiff, but you take it out from the refrigerator, uh, mix it up a little bit more, and then spoon it into the chocolate bag and slowly go around it. This is tricky, and the TV lights weren't making it any easier. If you don't have a walk-in freezer handy, do this someplace cool.
The garnish is sliced kiwi. The sauce. Simply pureed and strained frozen raspberry. opulent finale of stemmed half strawberries and whipped cream gills the mousse. Chef Echeba recommends Sancerre with the phyllo nest, Riesling with the seafood salad, Pouligny Montrachet with the striped sea bass, Pomar with the quail and duck, and Sauterne with dessert. And now dinner is served. Join us next time for more cooking excitement. This menu compliments of Jackie's and Jackie Echeba, another great chef of Chicago. Chicago land, yeah, you did Chicago land.